Hello Intertubers and welcome to How Not To Play Privateer Part 12. This is going to be the strangest one yet. So this is all about one very strange file that uh, was on the Privateer disc and uh, it's also present on the uh, GOG installation. So if I just briefly put this window here, GOG Games Privateer, it's all about this one very odd file, tabtony.vda, and uh, whatever this thing is, I can tell you right now, it's not a GIMP VDA file. So. Sorry, um, bad case. Bad case of Linux users disease there. And there. So we have this file, what is it? It's some kind of batch file, right? So. Let's rename it and run it. Yeah, we have a slight problem here. This is kind of old and uh, it's not going to run in fake DOS. But that's not a big problem, right? Because uh, if you have Privateer installed, you have DOSBox. And DOSBox just hangs. So we are going to have to do better than that. Yeah, like, like Microsoft is going to fix that. So uh, this is only going to work in what you might call real DOS, not emulated DOS. And uh, for this to work, to, to get this working, we need a few things. Well, actually, two things. The first one is a um, box, although I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. It's that is a free software program that creates disk images. BX image is what I want. So, create new floppy or hard disk image. One. Hard disk. What kind of image? Flat. Size. Going with fuck guy. I mean, these. this sort of thing is the uh, physical properties of the disk that I'm fake hard disk that I'm creating. And we now have an image. You want 
I want to create a new file. Yes. All right, so. to mount this image. What did I call it? Uh, DOS 622. And then the size parameter. This one always gets me. 512 16 20. The FS not because it's not formatted. So, but then we will boot from Let's see where did I put these files? Like I have them here in a uh, this is a floppy disk images for MS-DOS 6.22, which I think is the last version. And uh, because this was such a uh, massive operating system, it, it comes on three disks. And that, I think, will work. We can try it. Okay, someone is an idiot. Let's see. Can't open image. What did I do wrong? Ah, what I did wrong is a really stupid dot .img img dot img all right let's just pretend i got that right can you set a press enter Even in the DOS days, uh, Microsoft OS's reboot a lot. Yeah, that's fine. Default settings are absolutely fine here. So, am I going to fill out my registration card? Probably not. So, let's see to uh, to change disks. I believe it's Control F four. Do I have a three eight six or higher processor? Yeah, probably. But I don't think I'll be bothering to do that. a four enter antivirus eh? and um, improved on delete and even Windows versions of these and remember to run scan disk regularly <laughs> yeah I don't think I'll be doing that So 
I think uh, any enjoyer of old games should know how to do this because there's a few games that won't even run in DOSBox but will run in MS-DOS inside DOSBox. And uh, yeah, I'm about to demonstrate one of them. Remove all disks from all floppy drives. I actually can't, but I'm just going to press enter anyway. Now installed and uh, wants me to reboot. Okay, well I will kill that. So instead of booting from um, a bunch of DOS floppies, I should now be able to boot from the C drive. And that's a dash L, not a one, by the way. So. Starting MS-DOS. <sighs> Hi, I'm testing extended memory. Oh, yes. Now, all we need to do is uh, get this weird tapped me file into the DOS environment. So, yeah, there's the DOS stuff. And here we have a problem. Because we're in real DOS, we can't use DOSBox mounting. We can't even exit from DOS. Okay. So, back to the drawing board. It took me a while to figure this one out. Um, lose the don't boot from DOS and change the image mount. This time we'll mount it to C and we must replace the FS with FAT because uh, since DOS has now formatted it, it's now uh, FAT rather than file system non. So yeah, the uh, HMTTP file is still there, so that's great. But we can also mount D. Copy this file to C and not to You know there's actually only one T in how not to play. Never mind. Right, and now we can exit this. And go back to booting into DOS. Oh, yes, hi, Mem. I'm sure I have the right amount of extended memory, it's fine. First, you have to give this file its rightful name. Now, uh, remember that its original name was tabtme.vda. And uh, the observant will notice that this is actually advent.bat backwards. If I don't sort it back right. Sorry, I have fat fingers, we all know this. And finally, please place this file into there. We can type advent setup, which I've already done. So here we are playing Art D's first batch adventure. You might be wondering at this point, 
Who is Art D? Well, I don't know for sure, but take a look at this. Oh, and one more thing. What's that? Privateer was developed at Origin Systems. The executive producer was Chris Roberts. The producer was R. Scott Russo. Aaron Roberts stepped in as the associate producer. Yeah, yeah, great. But who programmed this baby? Well, Ed Morrow was the lead programmer. The other programmers were Charles Caprelli, Ronaldo Castro, Arthur DiBianca, Edwin Hero, Alex Gibson. Batch adventures are pretty nasty. It, it's a text-operated adventure game, except it's actually done by a bunch of batch files. We're actually in DOS, and we can run any batch file here, like DIR. And these are all the commands we can use, except uh, probably Advent, uh, being the master. Yeah, so we are on sunny north-south path. Get the knife. Ah. Oh. Yeah, you don't get sensible error messages when you just try to do something the game doesn't know about. You just get bad command or file name because we're in DOS. A sign has been planted next to the hatchery. Yeah, it's um. That way needs down. Bridge cross stream to the west. Ah, yes, it's used for everything. <laughs> So there must be state stored somewhere, because you can't, you can't use the knife like this if you don't have the box. Anyway. I guess we can go down now, because we have a light, so we won't get eaten by a Gru. The letters. S-C-S-C-S-C-F-Y etched in one wall. No, I already have no clue. Yep, I have no idea what I'm doing. South, maybe. Well, which wall? <laughs> yep, I have no idea what I'm doing. But uh, maybe someone can figure this out. Anyway, this has been a short episode, but I just think it's really cute that there is a secret adventure game here. So, if you really want to play this, this is how you do it. And it even cleans up after itself. <laughs> Marvellous. Well, I'll say I'll see you next time, but this is probably the last How Not to Play Privateer, because... I really don't think there are any more secrets to talk about, but we'll see.